Hey guys, I hope you are doing well. Today I'm going to be bringing you just another video on some quick tips and some Final Cut Pro basics that really helped up my editing game. Um, and we're going to be focusing on some velocity work, such as slowing your clips down and making them look extra nice, um, as well as some basics like using markers and some audio effects that a lot of people use. And most importantly, how to isolate your audio from music and background sounds and whatnot. So that's actually what we'll start with. First things first, I will play for you the actual clip that I will be showing you um, that we'll be working with today. Luke Skywalker came here to find one. <laughs> I know, I was with him. So as you can see, that clip has not a lot of music actually. I don't think there's really any playing. But it did have some background sounds, some rumbling, extra sound effects. So we really just want to get rid of that. Um, I will point out that to be able to do this, to be able to isolate your clip, you want to make sure that whatever footage or movie file you're working with has either six audio channels, which is usually abbreviated as 6CH, or more than that, um, if you only have two, you won't really be able to do this. The way you find this, Say you're already in Final Cut Pro and you've downloaded a movie file. Go up here to the sound or volume icon, the audio inspector, and you'll get these dialog boxes that pop up. Um, so right now it's set on 8 mono, and that's what you want. If you're selected on something else, pick the one that has the highest number here. Uh, that's going to be how many channels you have. So I'm going to select 8 mono. This varies for different video files. I've had some before that have 16. I've also had some that have only 6 or 4. Um, it really just varies. So this also takes some looking over. Um, these are all of your audio files. So one of these has dialogue, which looks to be the first one. Um, and the rest of these are like background sounds, music usually, and whatever else they've added to the file. Um, and necessarily, this isn't uh, what the directors have put together. Sometimes it's just what encoders and other users have separated on their own. But for this case, we're going to remove every dialog box or uncheck them except for the first one, since that is our speaking. So once you've done all that, you should actually see slight changes probably in your video timeline. The audio should look a little bit different. Um, and it should sound different as well. So let's take a listen to what that sounds like now. Luke Skywalker came here to find one. <laughs> I know. I was with him. That was pretty amazing. Very isolated. We can actually take a look at what the before and after sounds like. So I'll paste the clip and I'll check all those boxes back on and we'll play them both side by side. So here is the original. Luke Skywalker came here to find one. <laughs> I know. I was with him. Luke Skywalker came here to find one. <laughs> I know. I was with him. So that was a lot of a difference. I'll just get rid of this for now. That was showing you how to break down your audio and music and whatever background sounds you have when you're editing. And that's especially nice for edits where you do use a lot of dialogue. I know a lot of Harry Potter video editors use that. Um, Euphoria. A lot of videos where they're just trying to tell a story with the audio that's spoken in the show or movie series. The next thing I wanna show you is the kind of vintage audio effects people will use in their edits. And if you're using Final Cut Pro, this is pretty simple. I just do this a lot myself. I go down to the audio effects section. I believe it's distortion and it's called vintage radios. And this makes it very loud. So sometimes I have to take the volume down but I just double click this or drag it over. And as you can see, we're getting a lot of red um, in the loudest parts of our audio, which is why I take it down a little. I'll show you what that sounds like now with the effect applied. Luke Skywalker came here to find one. <laughs> I know, I was with him. So I love that effect. A lot of people on TikTok have started actually using this kind of effect. I think it's called like megaphone on TikTok, but editors were using it before TikTok and it's a really fun effect. And honestly, I've used it before if I can't get rid of background music or sound. It kind of helps isolate talking, but I will remove that for now. And this is just a very basic tip, but if you have music and or you just want to mark something on your clip, hitting M will set a marker. 
So you can see it's this purple thing right here. And if you double click it, you can name it or you can delete it. You can do some other stuff. I never really go in here. You can mark whether or not it's completed. You can add chapters. So this is just helpful for a lot of editors. And you can hit M as clips are playing. M, M, M. So as I was hitting that, we were placing markers. Finally, I'm going to show you some uh, speed, not transitions, but I'll just show you some speed tricks. So we'll crop this clip here of Ray. And I'm gonna drag this out here. And I'm just gonna take the audio out for now. So that's what it looks like. It's pretty fast and shaky. Let's say we want this to be super slow. I'll take this down to 25%. So if you just leave it as that, it looks choppy because it's just slowing things down, not blending anything. It looks like this, which honestly just kind of reminds me of GIFs that I would see on Tumblr, which is fine. This can work in your edits if this is what you want to do. A lot of people have used um, other blending modes like frame blending, which if you're doing frame blending, that's also really nice and it works really well. Um, but you do start to see not a fuzziness, but a jumpiness between frames. And it's pretty obvious that you're using some kind of blending. Um, and a way I started getting rid of that was by changing to optical flow. And I just kind of avoided that for a long time because I didn't really know what it was until I researched. But as you can see, Final Cut Pro is analyzing it for optical flow. And up here we have the progress bar. Um, and one big tip I have, this always, can cause problems, but if you have the analyzing message up here on your video, do not click anywhere or do anything else until that finishes analyzing. It can be tricky, like sometimes I will have an insanely short clip and it will be going very, very slow. And at first I just kind of let that happen. But I also found that if you'll get an X on here if you want to stop the operation, sometimes I just hit X go back down to here and hit optical flow again, even though it's already checked, and it will render that much faster. But if we render this now, now that it's complete, you'll see what I mean about it being much smoother. So I will copy this clip and set it back to frame blending. And I almost, I might crop these so that we can put the clips side by side so you can really see the difference. I mean, it was probably pretty obvious, but it's just crazy to me how smooth it can be once you use optical flow instead of frame blending. So I will move our optical flow clip to the right. So the clip on the left is frame blending, the clip on, clip on the right is optical flow. And let's go to the start and we'll render these both. And let's take a look at the difference. So we really start to see that jumpiness, like you can see it here. It's jumpy between frames and it's not on optical flow. And we get that a couple more times, like here, here. It's just a huge difference. And I really think what Optical Flow is doing is it's trying to guess or make a frame in between the two frames. So instead of these just trying to blend together, they're actually making more frames and merging those all. That's why it looks so much smoother. I think that's just something a lot of people have done because they really want a smooth clip to work with. Another thing I have done before with clips like this I'm just gonna take this to full size here a second. People will make the beginning portion of a clip fast. So I'll take this and I'll actually set it to two times speed, which makes it very small. Fast right at the start, but then it's slow. And a lot of people use this when um, doing velocity effects. It works best, I feel like, if you're using something that has movement, but not some crazy thing, like if I was editing Avatar, for example, and they were doing water bending or something, it would look weird if I took a clip of them moving their arms and legs a lot and I set that to two times speed because then it would just be way too much going on right at the first steps and then have it slow. 
so yeah, you kind of got to be careful with what you are doing here, but I think it can add some more visual interest, especially in between clips or as a transition or if you're editing to the beat of something. So yeah, I hope you guys have uh, learned a bit through this, making sure to isolate the audio on your clips. Um, if you have the six channels or more than that. So if you're downloading video files, look for 6CH. Um, I also hope using the vintage effect here has shown you just a fun way to edit the audio. And then using optical flow to slow things down or using the speed up and then slow down method to add some visual interest to your edits. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you have any other requests or questions or comments uh, down below and I will see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.